Hello. 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 And I'm community dermatologist in Frederick, in New Brunswick. I also teach medical students and residents, and I'm assistant professor for Dalhousie and Memorial Universities. I do clinical trials and participate in clinical research. And today we're going to talk about biosimilars, what you need to know. And here are my disclosures. So what we will cover today is uh, what are the biologics and the biosimilars? Are there any difference how similar they are? How do they fit in the treatment guidelines for psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis? And what are the updates and public policies related to biologics and biosimilars? We're fortunate that we have many treatment options uh, for psoriasis. Uh, these include topical treatments. Alors, nous avons euh, des traitements biologiques qui sont disponibles. Nous avons des traitements treatment available à nous. Now, there is an 11th biologic that has been recently approved by Health Canada. And there are generally four classes of biologic molecules that are available. You will hear about TNF-alpha antagonists, the interleukin-17 inhibitors, the interleukin-1223 inhibitor, and the interleukin-23 inhibitors. These are approved for treatment of moderate to severe plaque psoriasis, and also many of those treatments are approved for psoriatic arthritis. What are the biologics? Biologics are biological products. They are really different products such as vaccines, blood components, hormones, and medical treatments. There are complex structures composed of sugars, proteins, and nucleic acids. They are quite hard to make. Uh, they are isolated from a variety of natural sources, and these include uh, human cells, animal cells, microorganisms as well, and they are produced by uh, biotechnology methods and uh, new cutting-edge technologies. Uh, they can be used to treat a variety of medical conditions, and these include inflammatory conditions like psoriasis, but also cancer and genetic disorders. And uh, here is just an example of uh, one simple molecule of the non-biologic, which is an aspirin on your left-hand side, comparing to the very complex structure of the infliximab, or many of you will know it as a Remicade. And you can see that uh, the infliximab molecule has uh, many uh, molecules itself within it, but also it's quite a complex folded structure, whereas aspirin is a very simple structure. So you can imagine how the uh, manufacturing uh, process would be quite difficult uh, for the infliximab and perhaps uh, less difficult for aspirin. And here is a photograph just um, showing one part of the uh, biologic plant. And you can see there are these complex machines that uh, it requires. Nous avons des machines complexes qui suivent euh, et qui doivent répondre à des normes très strictes. Alors, l'exemple de produits biologiques. We all know that uh, to grow, uh, we need a human growth hormone. It, it's a natural substance, but occasionally um, it's not normally produced, so the kids would not be able to grow. So there is a biologic somatotropin that is used to treat growth hormone deficiency in children. Insulin is another uh, um, excellent example of the biologic. We know that insulin is need um, uh, when we need to treat the diabetes, and this is available um, for treatment. Nivolumab is another biologic, and it blocks cancer pathway important in metastatic melanoma. And uh, just going outside of the skin again, uh, alimtuzumab is a biologic that is used to treat multiple sclerosis. So you could see that these are not new molecules. They've been around for a long time and uh, they're used to treat a variety of conditions. What about biosimilar? Biosimilar is also a biologic drug. It is highly similar to a biologic drug that was already authorized for use 
there are no expected clinically meaningful differences in the efficacy or safety between the biosimilar and the biologic drug. And this is a very important point. They're very similar. We call the drug that was already authorized for use as a reference biologic drug. So the biosimilar molecules will be compared to this reference biologic drug that is considered to be a standard. Biosimilars are authorized based on thorough comparison to a reference biologic drug. And biosimilar may enter the market after the expiry of the reference biologic. Um, so it does take um, some time for these biosimilar uh, drugs to come to the market. What about biosimilar versus generic? Are they the same? No, they're not the same. They're actually quite different. Uh, generic drugs are small molecules that are chemically synthesized. So you could um, think of that structure of the aspirin um, where um, you basically identify the medicinal ingredient, um, the formula, and you make it identical uh, to the reference product. So it's not highly similar, it's identical. However, the biosimilars, uh, they are highly similar. They cannot be identical because they are large and complex molecules. They're also made from living cells. So there is some degree of variability. Compared to generics, more studies are needed for regulatory authorizations of biosimilars in order to demonstrate that it is highly similar to, to the reference biologic. Why do we need biosimilars when we have biologics? Really is to save costs, to have more resources for introduction of newer drugs in the future. Biosimilars are highly regulated in Canada. The regulatory um, process involves the Food and Drug Act and food and drug regulations. Uh, biosimilars are manufactured to the same regulatory standards as other biologic drugs. Um, and this is all um, scientifically evaluated and uh, authorized by Health Canada. Rigorous standards for authorization mean that you can have the same confidence and quality, efficacy and safety of a biosimilar as in any other biologic drug. Biosimilar manufacturers must provide information to Health Canada that demonstrate the similarity of their biosimilar to the reference biologic. And the purpose of these studies is to demonstrate similarity. The type of data that is required to support uh, biosimilar authorization, um, it differs from the reference biologic drug. So if we look at these studies um, that are usually required by Health Canada to approve um, a biologic or biosimilar, uh, they include the structural and functional studies, non-clinical studies and clinical studies. And uh, when we look at the regulatory process, so to approve um, a biologic, majority of the studies are focused on the clinical side, so on the right-hand side. Whereas if we compare the process um, to the biosimilar structure, the majority of the efforts are made to look at the structural and functional studies to demonstrate that similarity. So the structural and functional studies are very important because they are um, basically look at the product stability, the biological activity of the molecule, the physiochemical properties, immunochemical properties, and they look at the purity and impurity profiles. So these studies are generally considered to be more sensitive than the clinical studies for detecting the differences between the biosimilar and the reference biologic drug. The non-clinical studies are usually done in cells and then compare the effects of the proposed biosimilar to the reference biologic drugs. Clinical studies are also required and their purpose is to show that there are no clinically meaningful differences in efficacy and, and safety um, between the reference biologic drug and the biosimilar. And these studies are done in, um, in humans, in patients. So the goal of the evaluation is to demonstrate the biosimilar and the reference biologic drug are highly similar. 
there are no clinically meaningful differences in efficacy and safety between the biosimilar and the reference biologic drug. And here is an example of one of uh, the studies looking at the biosimilar called ABP501. It was compared to the adalimumab. You may hear um, or know adalimumab as Humira. And um, this was randomized. So that means that the um, groups were selected at random. It was double blind. So the um, investigators and the patients were blinded to the treatment. Uh, the trial ran for 52 weeks. It was a phase three trial, and it uh, included patients with moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Um, there are two Canadian investigators as main uh, authors on this, on this paper. And the objectives of this uh, study was to demonstrate uh, similarity in efficacy, safety, and immunogenicity of this new biosimilar ABP501 versus adalimumab uh, for moderate to severe psoriasis. Uh, please note that this was published in 2017 and this uh, biosimilar is already approved and uh, is available for use. And uh, here I'm showing uh, the study diagram. So you could see that um, the design of this trial included two uh, treatment arms where the patients were randomized to receive either ABP501. So this is the new biosimilar. Uh, and uh, they continued to receive this biosimilar for the full study duration. However, um, below you could see that the other patient arm had received the adalimumab or Humira uh, injection at the same uh, dosing schedule and frequency as the biosimilar. At 16 weeks, these patients were re-randomized uh, to receive uh, either the biosimilar or to continue the adalimumab. And the reason to do that is to look at the real world scenario. So if I see someone on Humira and they need to be switched to the biosimilar, what happens to them? Do we expect that the efficacy of the biosimilar will be the same? So, is, or, and of course, is it safe? So if somebody is switched from adalimumab to the biosimilar of adalimumab, would they expect to have the same efficacy profile, but also is it just as a safe treatment? And uh, here is a uh, very nice uh, figure shown um, on the y-axis, the improvement in the psoriasis scores from baseline. And uh, on the y-axis, you could see uh, the time points so in weeks, so week four, week eight, week 12, and so on. And it is really easy to see that all the lines overlap. So that means that in terms of the efficacy in, in the psoriasis, the uh, um, biosimilar performed just as well as adalimumab, and there was no problem switching from adalimumab to the biosimilar. What about the safety? So adverse events are always very important. It's something that we report as investigators during the clinical trials. And here you can see that uh, the um, adverse event profile is very similar between the uh, delimumab and the uh, biosimilar. And there were no problems uh, switching from one to, from the delimumab to the biosimilar. Uh, you could see there's slight variability, which is it would be expected uh, for the number of patients included in this trial. Another important factor when we look at the biosimilar um, programs is to look at the immunogenicity. You may know that, or you, you might have experienced when you treated with a particular treatment with some, with some time, you may feel, well, it's not working anymore. It's lost its efficacy. And we say, well, the person became almost immune to the, to the medication. So what happens is the person can develop the antibodies against the treatment. So it's almost like your immune system decides that it um, will not allow you to have the treatment response. So it produces those antibodies. So these studies um, always look at these antibodies um, 
uh, looking at the profile, is it similar to the originator or reference product uh, compared to the biosimilar? And you can see here that there are no clinically meaningful differences. So in conclusion, the authors tell us that ABP501 and andalimumab have similar clinical efficacy, safety, and immunogenicity profiles over 52 weeks, including after single transition when the patients were moved from andalimumab to the biosimilar in this patient population. And uh, as I already mentioned, so this has already has been submitted to Health Canada and uh, ABP501 has its own name and it's already approved uh, for uh, clinical use. So what biologic psoriasis treatments that have biosimilars now? There are three that we have for psoriasis and uh, psoriatic arthritis. And these include infliximab, or you may know it as Remicade, Etanercept, or you may know it as Enbrel, and Adalimumab, and you may know it as Humira. And this table um, summarizes the available um, originated reference products, but also their uh, biosimilar products. And uh, you may see some of the biosimilar. Alors, peut-être verrez-vous. Euh, ces noms de biosimilaires euh, et peut-être que ces noms vous sont products have been approved uh, for so this is not very unique to psoriasis but it's um, rather quite broad and applies to a variety of um, other inflammatory conditions that include psoriatic arthritis um, Crohn's disease ulcerative colitis So how does this process work? So if you have the drug coverage through the provincial government, you will need to switch to a biosimilar from originator product. And if you're a new patient who prescribed either the Limumab, Infliximab, or Etanercept, you may receive one of those biosimilars. If you're an existing patient who already received in Humira, Remicade, or Enbrel, Um, so uh, one of those molecules, you may be switched to biosimilar after discussion with your doctor. And your doctor will give you um, instructions and guide on through the process and we'll discuss the next steps. And as many of you know that when you are receiving a biologic treatment, often there is a, a patient support program Uh, that helps you navigate uh, the, uh, the insurance, uh, the um, actually receiving the medication uh, and the administration of the medication. So they play an important role um, in, in this treatment. And you may wonder, so what happens if you are on adalimumab and you move on to a biosimilar of adalimumab, would you keep the same support program The answer is no. So you would move from one patient support program to another patient support program. And we are hoping that uh, these patient support programs will be nearly equivalent uh, from one uh, biologic to a biosimilar. In reality, uh, this is fairly new process for all of us, and we do expect some hiccups along the way. So if you are experiencing problems uh, with the new patient support program, it is important to let your healthcare provider know so we can troubleshoot the, the problems and um, um, make it um, more streamlined um, and easy to navigate, but also make it an easier process for other patients who will go The other change that you may see is actually the injection device. So uh, you may see that going from the originator reference product, uh, you will receive a different uh, injection device because it's going to be a different product. Um, they should be fairly similar again. Uh, they do go through rigorous regulatory process approval. Uh, it is important to let your healthcare provider know if you prefer a pre-filled syringe or if you prefer an auto-injector, because then we can uh, select the biosimilar program that uh, has this, these qualities. And uh, there are four uh, Canadian provinces that now have biosimilar initiatives. These include Alberta, British Columbia, New Brunswick, and Quebec. 
And I'd like to know uh, to go province by province uh, to kind of outline the process. Um, so let's look at Alberta. So Alberta, by a similar program, is um, managed by the Blue Cross. Um, we expect that the um, the switch has to happen by May 1st, 2022. So you do have a little bit of time and you can find the information on the Blue Cross website. And uh, it's very well written and laid out. So they mention if you have certain plans and you can check which plan you have. So you would be expected to move to a biosimilar. And certainly if you have any questions uh, about these changes, you can speak to the uh, Alberta Blue Cross, but it's also very important to discuss this with your healthcare professional. British Columbia has a different process. Uh, they are doing it in a sort of tiered way uh, or phases. Um, so um, depending on the condition and the product, uh, there are different timelines. Uh, so for some, uh, the, the switch date uh, has to be before October 6th, of this year, um, and um, th there are many conditions that are included, including the psoriasis. So again, uh, contact the um, British Columbia Biosimilar Initiative Program. Uh, the information is here, um, and they will uh, guide you through the process and answer your questions, but also, again, very important to contact your physician as they will help you guide in the, the uh, guide, guide in through the process as well. New Brunswick also has the Biosimilar Initiative Program, so we are expecting to um, change the patients from the um, originator reference product uh, by November 30th of this year. Uh, and this applies to patients on adalimumab, etanercep, and infliximab um, for the for many indications, including the plaque psoriasis. And again, the process for switching is well outlined. Uh, so they recommend that you make an appointment with, with your um, doctor. Um, it has to happen before November 30th, and I encourage you to do it as soon as uh, possible. Um, if you call physician's office uh, on November 29th, it will be difficult to, to get that switch done the last minute. Uh, it's also important to, to discuss the actual process with the doctor as um, we will explain the process, the options. Uh, remember that we need to pick the right um, injection device and submit all the paperwork to the new patient support program. Um, so it is, a, it is a bit of a process, so don't delay uh, going through the process as it will be uh, more difficult to do last minute. And again, if you have uh, questions, you can um, inquire with the um, uh, Biosimilar Initiative um, New Brunswick Drug Program. Quebec also is uh, just recently came up uh, with the uh, sort of similar initiative and uh, their timeline is a little bit uh, different. So um, the patients are expected to move to the biosimilar uh, uh, by April 13, 2022. So there's a little bit of time. Um, so make sure that you contact your healthcare professional and get the pro process uh, rolling. Um, to avoid delays. And this is a useful table that I found on one of the websites that uh, outlines the biologic policies um, among the different provinces and territories. Um, there are difference in terms of the, uh, what happens to the patients that who have not been on biologic treatments before and initiating the um, the, the process um, versus uh, for patients who already are on the one of those biologics and need to be um, continued on the same biologic or switch to the biosimilar. What about nocebo effect? So you, I'm sure you, you have uh, known about this, just uh, didn't know the, the name of nocebo. 
And the um, thinking behind this is that negative expectations can affect treatment outcomes. And I may extend this um, to, um, you know, real life scenarios where if you expect that something will not go right, it probably will not go right. If you have very positive expectations, if you're an optimist, often things go uh, smoother and easier. Um, so mindset can really impact uh, the symptoms and sense of well-being. Um, the factors that contribute to experiencing the nocebo effect are the mental health issues, language barriers, uh, also relying on unbalanced online media information as a source, and negative interactions with uh, healthcare professionals and settings. And this is um, one example of a study looking at this nocebo effect um, where patients uh, were receiving saline infusion compared to the, um, one of the analgesic medications. And they looked at the um, sort of different categories of patients. So some patients had no expectations of the treatment. Some patients had positive expectation of the treatment and some patients had negative expectation of the treatment. And if you look on the left-hand side, you can see that the patients uh, who had um, negative expectation of the treatment, their bar is very similar to the baseline. So they didn't really experience that positive um, pain uh, reducing effect from the medication versus patients who had positive expectation actually had received better pain management um, with the medication. So expectation of a positive treatment effect doubled the analgesic effect of the drug, while expectations of the negative outcome eliminated the analgesic effect. So please be mindful of this and be mindful of maybe your negative uh, feelings about particular treatment, because it can affect the, the treatment um, outcomes. So what can you do? So number one, stay positive. Do acknowledge your negative feelings and nocebo effect. Seek out more information on biosimilars and speak to your doctor and discuss your concerns. Learn about switching process and be aware of the timelines. Do not wait until the last minute. What would you like to discuss with your doctor or should consider discussing with your doctor at your visit? Will I be switched to a biosimilar? Because sometimes we have to, and sometimes we don't need to switch. So you may not be affected by this program. You may be affected by this program. Um, what biosimilar will I transition to? So this, again, will be discussed depending on the uh, physician experience and your preferences. What are the timelines? Very important. Um, what is the deadline to switch? And uh, would you like to use a pen or pre-filled syringe. Uh, and what about patient support program? You will be moved uh, to a different patient support program. So it's important to have that information and uh, perhaps have their contact information um, if things don't go as well as they have planned. And of course, there are many resources out there. I will refer you to the Canadian Psoriasis Network um, there's excellent information about psoriasis and psoriasis treatments, including the biologics and biosimilar initiatives um, on this website. Um, there's also um, very helpful information in terms of the uh, links linking you to the websites in British Columbia, Alberta, Quebec, and New Brunswick. So you don't need to necessarily navigate it yourself. You could just uh, refer to one website and go from there. So the key takeaways for, from today would be that biosimilars and medicines that have similar efficacy and safety compared to the originator biologic, introduction of biosimilars does not change psoriasis or psoriatic treatment guidelines. Biosimilars used in place of the originator molecules, so you would expect the same excellent treatment um, as you would uh, receive was the uh, reference product. By a similar initiative programs underway in Canadian provinces, stay informed and talk to your doctor if your treatment will incorporate a biosimilar. 
And I would like to thank you for your attention. I wish you um, excellent health and um, uh, treatment success with the biologics and biosimilars.